spirometry and measuring lung volumes you can't go into step one without knowing about this topic. You have to know this. Here is our IRV that stands for inspiratory reserve volume. Then we have our TV. No folks, that's not our television, that's our tidal volume. ERV, that's our expiratory reserve volume. And after that we've got our RV, that's the residual volume. First aid has a way of remembering this and it is liter, so lung volume is liter, it's I-T-E-R. Lung, L, L, I-T-E-R, that's liters. Breathing in quietly, so quiet breathing in. Here's the, the air going up in our lungs, our lungs filling up, and our lungs as we expire, lungs going down, filling up again, filling down, breathing out, breathing up again, breathing out. This is just quiet, normal breathing with not too much exertion, just breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, up and down. Here's where things get a little bit interesting. Let's try to fill up our lungs all the way, breathing in as much air as possible, as much air as our lungs can hold. Letting that air go back down, we're letting all the air out now, expiring that air, blowing the air out. Here at this point, if we go ahead and keep on trying to blow out as much air as we possibly can so that we can't blow out any more air, this is where we are right now. So we filled our lungs all the way up, trying to breathe in as much air as we possibly can. I blew as much air out as, as I possibly can, all the way till I can't blow out any more air. A way of thinking about it is you're trying to blow out birthday candles. You're blowing out all the air that you possibly can. This is the very bottom point we get, okay? Even after we do blow out all of that air, there is still something called the residual volume. Residual volume that is still still in our lungs, even after we've tried to blow out as much air as we possibly could, there's still going to be some air down in there, okay? It's called the residual volume and it's just in our lungs. We can't get that out. Now if we go back to normal breathing again, now we're back to our tidal volume. So this diagram here, this is something that the student just has to know cold, has to have it memorized and you have to know it backwards and forwards. So inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, and residual volume. This is going to be labeled as zero, 1.2, 2.2 and 2.7. This should be 6.0. Okay, this is all liters. I'm gonna put L, liters. So it's important to know that tidal volume especially is about, it's about 0 0.5, 0 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters. Inspiratory capacity is our inspiratory reserve volume plus our tidal volume. Expiratory reserve volume plus our residual volume is our forced residual capacity. That's FRC. So again, this is our forced residual capacity. And everything except the residual volume added up together is our vital capacity, our VC vital capacity. It's the IRV plus the TV plus the ERV. That is going to equal our VC. Everything combined here, everything including the residual volume, that is called the TLC. Tender loving care, no, the total lung capacity. The total lung capacity is everything. You just can't forget that. TLC, VC, IC, FRC, IRV, TV, ERV, RV. You need to know all of these things along with the diagram, even the numbers. All right, you need to know that. So a way of thinking of the IRV is the air that can be breathed in after normal inspiration. So normal inspiration, this has to do with what can still be breathed in after the normal inspiration. Tidal volume, just the air that moves into lung with each quiet inspiration, typically about 500 milliliters or 0.5 liters. Expiratory reserve volume, air that can still be breathed out after normal expiration, our RV. That basically is just air and lung after maximal expiration. Good question that they'll ask is, which of these cannot be measured by spirometry? And the answer is residual volume. Now, if they give you the TLC, if they give you IRV, TV, ERV, if they give you the TLC and the VC or something where you can deduce the RV, then yeah, sure, you can calculate that. But a very common question that I've seen before is, what cannot be measured on spirometry? And the answer is residual volume. I see inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume. Functional residual capacity, ERV plus RV. VC is IRV plus TV plus ERV. It's everything except RV. And TLC is everything. Hopefully this is fairly straightforward to you. An example of why you might need to know that's 0.5 liters for tidal volume. They might ask you to calculate the minute ventilation or VE. And what that equals, what that VE equals is our tidal volume times respiratory rate. Again, the respiratory rate is so many breaths per minute. And they'll say, well, what is the minute ventilation? You'll have to know that tidal volume is about 0.5 milliliters. Okay. You may also have to calculate the alveolar ventilation and we'll go ahead and have that stand for 
V A. What this accounts for is something called dead space. So using the TV for title volume, and what you're going to subtract from that is we'll go ahead and call it V D for dead space. And what V D is, it's, we're breathing in air, but it's not actually getting down into our lungs and reaching the alveoli. Okay, so we're taking that into account. We're taking the tidal volume, what's breathed in, and we're subtracting the air that actually doesn't actually get down into our lungs into our alveoli. So that's what we're subtracting and accounting for. And then we take that and we just multiply it by our respiratory rate. And don't forget that our physiologic dead space here, we can also calculate that using our tidal volume times P little a CO2 minus P big E CO2 divided by P little a CO2. The P little a CO2 is our arterial uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. The P E CO2 is our expired air of PCO2. But again, a way of thinking of dead space is simply the volume of inspired air that does not take part in gas exchange. It does not reach the alveoli. We breathe it in, but it doesn't get down into our lungs. It does not reach our alveoli, and it does not take place in gas exchange. Okay, so these are just equations that we can use in our question stem. Another reason why this graph is so, so high yield and so important to know is that we can tie in obstructive diseases and restrictive diseases. For example, the residual volume with obstructive disease is going to be increased. Increased RVO for obstructive. Obstructive diseases, again, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis. These obstructive diseases are going to have an increased residual volume. They have a problem getting air out. It's stuck in their lungs. With TLC, our TLC with obst obstructive is going to be up. It's going to be up with, with obstructive. So I don't know how else to put this, but our TLC is up with obstructive diseases. The, the total lung capacity for restrictive diseases will be decreased, and the residual volume will be down with restrictive also. They have a problem with getting air in. So again, there's two broad categories, the obstructive and the restrictive. That's for another discussion. But I just want to briefly mention that RV is up with obstructive. It's down with restrictive. TLC is increased with obstructive, and TLC is decreased with restrictive. And that all ties in with the whole idea of obstructive diseases have a problem with too much air in their lungs that they can't get out, whereas restrictive diseases have problems with getting air into their lungs. So it makes sense that these things should be increased with this disease and decreased with this disease. It makes sense and it fits together. But some things that I just want to go over really quick is that we learned about some equations, some important equations that, that we may need to use in the exam. Okay. The big things that I wanted to tie in with this lecture is the basics. IRV, TV, ERV, RV, IC, FRC, all of these things, VC, TLC, and, and give you a brief introduction to the restrictive and obstructive diseases, um, but that pretty much does it for now. Okay, calculating the monitor ventilation, calculating the alveolar ventilation, calculating the dead space if we need to. And that wraps up everything I want to say for, for right now.